Welcome back to Let's Play Assassin's Creed Liberation, Burning Dog fans. Last time, we beat the game and looked at the credits. But, uh... Pretty. This time, let's get started. Looking at these edited uh, listings. I'm pretty sure I looked at this one when I first started, yeah. Uh, yeah, they really do. Uh, Into the uh, Madeline stuff, don't they? Jean-Jacques Blaise d'Abadie. Uh, he was born in France in 1726, following the Treaty of Paris and the Secret Treaty of Aix la Chapelle in 1763. He was made tr uh, governor of Louisiana and sent there to dismantle the French garrison and prepare the territory for handover to Templar plants within the Spanish government. He is said to have died of a nervous disorder in 1765, was more truthfully the victim of an assassin attack. Raphael Joaquin de Ferrer. Born in uh, Gipuzkoa in the 1730s to a Templar family and sent to Cuba at an early age. In 1765, he worked with Governor Jean-Jacques Blas d'Abadie, ooh, sorry to adjust my headset there, to ensure the transition of the Louisiana Territory to Templar oversight. Unlike uh, Antonio de Loa, he was a ruthless soldier who, who rose to prominence and responsibility, overseeing uh, excavation research. De Ferrer was a key proponent of a Templar initiative to divert slave labor to search for first civilization artifacts. He was assassinated at a Shichinitsa worksite at, at the hand of noted assassin Avalin de Grandpre. Gerald Blanc. Gerald Blanc was born in Acadia in 1745 to a rebellious family as militant actions against the English occupation preceded the great and terrible expulsion of the Acadians to Louisiana, death or hiding, following the burning of their homes. Blanc arrived in New Orleans, an orphan at the age of ten, and earned his keep first as an errand boy, then as a clerk and accountant to Philippe de Grandpre. Educa educated, intelligent, mild-mannered, and preoccupied with justice, he was welcomed into the Assassin Brotherhood and trained as an information officer. His lifelong infatuation with childhood companion Aveline de Grandpre is well documented, but the true nature of their relationship remains unconfirmed. Carlos Dominguez Captain Carlos Dominguez was born in the 1730s to a modest family in Spain and became a sailor at the first opportunity. Hard work and skill soon made him captain of his own ship, but soon gave way to alcohol and opportunism. This upright servant of the Templar Order devoted his life to earning and drinking a small fortune, providing safe transportation to anyone who would pay. Following the loss of his ship at the hands of Aveline de Grandpre, Captain Dominguez was forced to reform under his supervision. He remained productive until 1803, when he was reported missing at sea. Agate Agate was born in the 1720s on the Atlantic coast of Africa, official records unavailable. In 1729, he was taken into slavery and shipped to Saint-Domingue, where, where he fell in love with Aveline de Grandpre's mother, Jeanne, and was, taken under the wing of revolution, and was taken under the wing of revolutionary disruptor Francois Mackendal. He joined the Assassin's bro the Brotherhood in 1738, and was later forced to leave Jeanne to prove his commitment. Following a failed poisoning attempt against the white colonists of Saint-Domingue and Mackendal's subsequent execution, Agate fled to Louisiana, a marked man, and hid in the bayou. I'm just kind of surprised that part's true. Unable to restrain mounting Templar influence alone, he soon recruited Aveline de Grandpre and Gerald Blanc into the, assassin, into the Brotherhood of Assassins, I don't like the way they always write it that way, and trained them. Wrecked by a lifetime of abuse, violence, and paranoia, Agate eventually succumbed to self-doubt and died a suicide in 1777. He never saw closure for his life's work. Oh dear. 
Madeline de Lille was born in New Orleans in 1732, the cherished daughter of a wealthy merchant family. A beautiful woman of a keen intellect and sharp sense for business, she married Philippe Olivier de Grandpre in 1752 for the benefit of her family business, and later devoted herself to raising his daughter by a previous union, Aveline de Grandpre, in order to groom her for induction into the Templar Order. Yeah, that's a spoiler. Possessed of a calculating genius, she secretly oversaw the release. Uh, she secretly oversaw the release and transit of slaves, and even freed black people, including Jean, Aveline's mother, from around New Orleans to work camps at excavation sites devoted to the search for first civilization artifacts. She died in 1777, following the decimation of the Templar Order of New Orleans in an assassin in a Brotherhood of Assassins plot by Aveline de Grandpre and her cohorts and was laid to rest in St. Lu Louis Cathedral in recognition of a lifetime of service to the people of New Orleans. The assassins left no evidence. Philippe Olivier de Grandpre He was born in France in 1722 to a successful merchant family. As a young man, he moved to Louisiana in search of even greater prosperity and established a trading business, shipping goods from the New World to the Old. <clears throat> in 1744, in a trade mission to Saint-Domingue, he purchased Jeanne and took her as his placie, unofficial wife. In 1747, their daughter Avalon was born in New Orleans, and, she, and he experienced a personal enlightenment that saw him free them both. In 1752, he married Madeleine de Lille. Some years later, Jeanne disappeared, leaving Avalon in her care. A loving uh, father, Philippe Olivier, sought Aveline's education in business, ensuring she would grow into a woman of independent means, even if the law technically prohibited her from inheriting his estate. He died painfully in 1776, a victim of systemic poisoning, after discovering evidence of Templar interference in his business. Ah, oh, that would do it. Antonio de Ulloa Antonio de Alua was born in Spain in 1716. A prominent scientist and intellectual, he and a fellow researcher were the first to discover the element platinum. He was subsequently captured by the British, but released thanks to his connection to the Templar Order, and made a fellow of the Royal Society of London. He established the first museum of natural history, the first metallurgical laboratory in Spain, and the observatory of Cadiz, all the while acting in service to the Templar Order. In 1758, he became governor of, uh, fuck it, Peru, and in 1766 was appointed the first Spanish governor of Louisiana. He attempted to impose trade restrictions favoring Templar interests, but was ousted during the Louisiana Rebellion of 1768. Following an ultimatum from the Assassin Brotherhood, he withdrew from public life and Templar service, and died peacefully in 1780, uh, 1795, an old man. Jeanne. Jeanne was born on the Atlantic coast of Africa in the 1720s, official records unavailable. She was taken into slavery as a child and transported to Saint-Domingue, present-day Haiti. In 1744, Jeanne was purchased by Philippe Olivier de Grandpre, who took her to New Orleans. She became his placé, unofficial wife, and was granted her freedom upon bearing him a daughter, Aveline, in 1747. Jeanne vanished from New Orleans in 1757, leaving her daughter behind. There is more to this story. Look for it. And I like that this is the uh, only entry which isn't edited, because this guy was just a civilian. Uh, I was told that this is a real man! Uh, did I read this? Yes, I did. I think I did. I seem to remember, uh reading this yeah yeah the stuff at the bottom about the uh, where they repeat Louisiana and West Florida I remember that okay not pleased that that took half the video but uh god damn it here we are back in uh Yeah, you think you'd guess that would stand out. Mm -hmm. Here we are back in Chichen Itza. I thought there was one in there I didn't get. Where the spoilery pages are found. You! 
I'm much too busy. You. came here looking for the last pages of Jean's diary. I wonder what ever happened to her. She never showed up after that mission where Evelyn took the prophecy disc off her hands. Hmm. I'll show you a thing or two. <laughs> Fuck it. This part isn't even canon. <laughs> They were just NPCs in a video game to begin with. Sup? Oh, hey. Ahem. That's right, I used a number of bullets on, uh, Agate and his illusions. I like to imagine she was just flailing blindly at the air, the way that, uh, poison victims do. <laughs> Where the reward is. And I specifically avoided them, but... Come on. Oh, for fuck's sake. Like I said, janky. Ha! All diary pages have been collected. A special hat has been is unlocked. Feels appropriate, and even the last time I fuck it up like that, huh? Hey, I got it right la uh, the ver when I went to check page 29, wasn't it? Twenty-seven. I discovered something curious at the worksite today. The artifacts we unearthed bear a striking resemblance to the heart of the Brotherhood. A chill passed through me when I saw the first shard. I do not want to demean the kindness that has been shown me here, but I can't help but wonder, what is the true purpose of this excavation, and who are my employers behind their smiles? Oh, how I wish the Madame would send news from New Orleans. I miss Avalon so terribly, and how I wish to leave this place the moment it is safe. I have been promoted to forewoman, so, they do not, uh, so I know they do not detect my suspicion, but every day I grow more concerned. I do not like the greedy glint in DF's eyes, and he demands to know why more artifacts have not yet been found. Still no word from the Madame about Aveline. Does my daughter even remember my face? Well, there you go. I wasn't sure if there were any deliberate gaps, but no. Pages 1 to 30. All collected and in order. Let me just check that. Kill all Citizen E and experience the true ending. Oh, I didn't realize there was a uh, achievement for getting human shields. I've gone out of my way to get that. Ah, well. Say, Livy, collector, collect all diary pages, alligator eggs, Mayan statuettes, and mushrooms. Machete, kill five guards in fifteen seconds using only the sugar cane machete. Oops. Didn't get that either. The fuck? Hangman, perform ten predator moves using the whip. 
wonder what that means. I thought I got that one. Predator. Kill an enemy from a tree with a blowpipe while using eagle vision. Oops. Oh, eagle vision! I didn't do it with eagle vision. Is there a tree I can climb near here? No. Alright, fuck it. Let's just get out of here. Let's check out the, uh, unlockable. The unlockable hat, and call it a video series. Let me just make sure I'm going the right fucking way. I'm not. Let's just keep going. No, there is a thing there I didn't pick up on. Fuck you! You know, I was gonna say, if it makes you feel any better, he doesn't really exist, and I remember that guy doesn't really exist either. He gives no shits. He'll even transform me out of the area. Dum dum. Any minute now. Doesn't it work out here? <laughs> hey guys, like a big doofus, I let this uh, one video run on really, really long, so I'm gonna split it in half and post it as two post credits videos. That being said, I'm Burning Dog Face, and I'll see you in the next episode of Let's Play Assassin's Creed Liberation.